Hey everybody, welcome to Early Access PyCharm. I'm your host, Nafil Islam. Today we're going to be talking to Ilya and Alexei, the two people behind the bulk of the Django support that you see in PyCharm. Now you've already met Ilya and Alexei from previous podcast episodes, but I wanted them together in this one just to talk about how Django support came to be and what we plan to do in the future. So without much further ado, Ilya, take it away. Tell us how this all started. Actually, it started long before me by different people, but Django is one of the most popular frameworks and it uh, was most popular 10 years ago also. So we decided that people who use Python for web development will need Django. Okay, so I understand Django was really popular back then, but what other frameworks were you considering? I believe it was Pyramid, web to pi something like that. And there was also a framework named uh, Zomp, I believe. But it was mm -hmm. a very long time ago. Okay, so you decide to support Django. It's a different thing to just supporting libraries. How did you go about doing that? Uh, in the beginning. Yes, I believe the first thing we decided to do was sophisticated code completion because Sharm has a code completion for Python itself, but it is not enough for Django because Django has a very um, dynamic nature. Things like ORMs, for example, is a good example of dynamic nature. When, for example, a fun function argument names depend on module field names. So Alexei, talk to me about this a little bit more. We're saying that the ORMs are a good example of Django's dynamic nature, but for me, what I understand from an ORM is that you strictly define your models and you're supposed to know what attributes are on those models. You know the uh, Pulse tutorial from the Django documentation? And uh, there's a question and a choice. And uh, every question has choices and it's actually expressed in the model code as a choice having a foreign key on a question but it's actually possible to get the choice set from the question object by calling the choice set method and it's something you, you cannot really express statically you can only do this once you evaluated all the models built all the relationships and figured out that if this has this relation and this name so the other uh, the question has to have a attribute with this name so it's a very dynamic thing in nature one thing that also affected by uh, these relations is the uh, name of arguments of orm methods like filter method its argument names also depends on its relations yeah exactly so I'm guessing it's not just dynamic attributes that you need to care about. You also need to care about the different methods that are available to you on different objects and their instances. So for example, filter is not just any filter. It has specific keyword arguments like attributes underscore LTE or GTE that allows you to filter on different attributes of the model inside of a filter method. Yes, we have to have um, some knowledge of the exact methods that are being called. For example, it, it, it wouldn't make sense to code complete specific model attribute name in just any context. So we have to know that this, for example, is a filter function that is specific to Django. So knowing this, we can provide the useful suggestions. So Django, in my opinion, is not, and by this, I mean Django support is not just about code completion on methods and views, but it's also about having support for manage.py, being able to connect a URL to a view, which is then connected to a model if you have a model, and which is then connected to a form if you have a form, and being able to seamlessly navigate between all those different places in PyCharm, especially with the gutter icons and the go-to definitions and declarations and all that. How do you do all of that? How does that actually work? Well... <laughs> by understanding your code basically so uh we know that a specific place has to for example a specific function has to have a name of the template in it so knowing that we will also know wh which parameters are passed to the template we can code complete there we can have navigation back and forth to the template and from so 
Yeah, kind of like that by uh, having more understanding of your code. So I'm guessing when you say understand your code, is it that you have to write a lot of specific Django related logic to actually make this work? So I'm guessing that it's a lot of custom code and it's a lot of work. Yes, probably there are a lot of work when you have to just read Django manual and do some part code. But we also have a special code that tries to understand parts of Python code that use it to pass arguments to the template. Like you can pass arguments as a dictionary to the template, or you can use several dictionaries and merge them using update methods and so on. And we also need to understand it. Yes, so part of this is is Python support. We, uh, at least we know what Django library has inside. So that's Python support. When this is not enough, we come with the knowledge of Django and try to implement the Django specific things. So it's sometimes it's a lot of work, but it's also builds on top of um, many cool things like the Python support and the IntelliJ platform itself. So by now, you know, Django support is already pretty great. Uh, there's navigation, there's code completion, there's, you know, sweet, sweet understanding of your Python code and your Django code. Are you running out of ideas, Alexi? Well, uh, there's uh, there's always something to do. I mean, uh, sometimes the ideas come from other places. Sometimes we just uh, have some new cool stuff in Django and we want to implement that. So I'm going to have to ask this because I have to, but like, what's next for Django? Can you give us a sneak peek? Since Alexei does most uh, Django support now, I think... Uh... Alexei like, should answer. At least he should have more ideas than me. Yeah, Alexei, you should definitely have more ideas. And uh, thanks, Ilya, for throwing him under the bus so that I didn't have to. True, sure, I really should. We, uh, some time ago, got this concept of endpoints in the IntelliJ platform that actually maps all your URLs that you are using in your project, collects them, and builds a navigation. We have something like this in Django, but uh, we can enhance it, make it more powerful, Make it so that we can code complete it, not just in the Django project, but in any other code, like from a JavaScript or something. I'm also thinking about a way to better bring Django documentation closer to the user. So let me see if I understand this. So you can already link between all the different parts of Django. So from URL to view to template to model to whatever. And now what you're trying to do is also link any URL that's an actual HTTP URL directly to a view. And you know, this is this is kind of something that's already present in the endpoints project in IntelliJ, but we're trying to bring that here and trying to support it for Django and PyCharm. Yeah, exactly. Okay, tell me a little bit about how you want to make documentation better in Django, because you already have a lot of things enabled in Django. Well, I just want to make sure that it's easy to access from inside PyCharm uh, so that you don't have to switch to your browser or go to the website and search for the class that you want to read documentation on. We could show you on the spot right there, right, the element. We already have uh, some of this functionality, like if you have this enabled, uh, we can show you documentation for your settings.py constants right inside PyCharm, which is pretty cool because from Python point of view, those are just variables. It's so cool to hear how you know, we're constantly thinking about making Django easier to develop in PyCharm. But my question is, you know, how is it like to develop this kind of support on the IntelliJ platform? And how has it changed over time? Like, what was it like in the beginning? And, and what is it like now? I think the one thing that improved uh, is the platform documentation. Uh, we now have uh, official guides for plugin development, div developers, much less documentation available seven years ago. Right. And the reason you say plugin is because everything that PyCharm and Django is actually sort of developed as a plugin on top of core IntelliJ functionality. Yes. So seven years ago, I had to read a lot of platform internal code to understand how it worked and how to use it. And now... You can just read documentation. I believe it's one of the big difference 
and we also have a much better remote development support that we used to have. So when you want to develop your young project on remote uh, server using SSH, SSH uh, it is much easier to do now than it was many years ago. Well, on that note, thank you so much, both of you, for joining me today. And I hope to see you again pretty soon. Thanks. Thanks.